Hey everyone, today we are doing a walkthrough and a review of Camp Cedar, which is a luxury camping resort in Cincinnati, Ohio, right near Kings Island. It's kind of a mix between RV sites and these little cottages, and then it's got uh, you know, a pool, a restaurant, fitness center, things like that. Really, it's meant for people that want to kind of stay here and then go visit Kings Island very conveniently, but they do have some amenities that I want to show you as well. So first things first, I do have to tell you a little bit of a story. We are here, I think their second month open. Uh, I think they've been open for about four weeks now, four or five weeks, but we were supposed to be here uh, right at the beginning of summer. It's August right now, and they were supposed to open, I think in May or in June. We had one of the first weekends that we were gonna be here, and they actually ended up canceling our reservation uh, right before, the day before, we were getting ready to like pack up and go, and they canceled our reservation. They just sent us an email and said, we can't open yet, um, whether it's construction delays, whatever their excuse was, they couldn't find workers, they just weren't able to open. And this happened to a lot of people. This was big news in Cincinnati. People were like actually flying in and just completely kind of ruined their trip because they didn't have a place to stay. And they actually ended up doing this, I think, one or two more times times where they would, would set an open date, let people make reservations, and then just cancel their reservations right before they're about to open. So I don't know what was going on there, but they really kind of messed up. And you can see on their uh, Google reviews, their star rating is very, very low because they got a whole bunch of one star reviews. Obviously, they've been open now for about a month, so those reviews have gone up. Uh, a little bit, but uh, a lot of negativity around this place. I'm not going to take any of that in consideration. I'm going to review it just as it is as we walk through it and, and talk about the amenities and just kind of tell you if I think this place is a good place to stay. Is it cool or is it not? Is it lame? And would I stay here again? Is this a one and done kind of place or would I come back? All right, so I like to do these kind of reviews of resorts, and I've done plenty of other ones. You can check out uh, another one up here at the I button if you would like. But I like to do them kind of like we're walking around the resort, kind of checking out, so you can actually kind of see the layout and, and what it's like walking around. This is a, a pretty big, spacious resort. If you're on one end, it's going to be way different than if you're closer to the guest house. So we're going to walk the, the whole perimeter um, just to let you get familiar. And then I'm going to show you at the end, make sure you stay tuned because we're going to do some drone footage. I'm going to fly the drone around too so you can kind of get a, a different viewpoint. So first, let's orient ourselves with a map and I'll show you some of the uh, amenities that we're going to check out on the walk around. All right, so we're going to start actually where we are staying. We're staying in cabin. We're staying in a cabin, not an RV site, 458, and that's right here on the map. And then we're going to walk all the way back to the furthest cabins away from the main building. I'll let you know how far of a walk that is. They do offer to rent um, golf carts in, if you don't want to walk or, or you don't think that you can walk that far. Unfortunately, when we got here, we tried to rent a golf cart and they were gone. They were rented out for the whole weekend, so we couldn't get one. So pro tip would be make sure if you do want a golf cart, book it as soon as you make your reservation. So we'll walk all the way around. We'll show you uh, the different amenities when we come back, the pool, the fitness center. Uh, we will show you what they call the Belize Street Cantina, which is basically outdoor food uh, restaurants. And then we'll show you the main building, uh, which has the main restaurant. It's got a gift shop, the lodge, uh, the check-in. And then at the end, I will give you a complete review of if I think it's a good place to stay or not. All right, let's start the tour. And again, we're starting from uh, our cabin and we're gonna walk around the whole perimeter. And it's a hot one today, hot uh, August day. And again, we're walking through the parking lot here. And then we're gonna walk up and to the left and walk all the way to the end of the cabins, the furthest cabins, and then walk all the way from there all the way back to the pool. And I'll tell you how long that actually takes and see if you might wanna get a golf cart if it's uh, you know quite a hike just to get to the pool from those far cabins. All right, so we're going up here, we're taking a left. All right, now the RV section and the cabins are kind of sectioned off differently. The RVs are kind of in this middle section and then towards the front, and then there's this one little section um, up north of the main street. But the cabins are kind of all dotted throughout, kind of in these little cul-de-sacs all throughout the north side of that street. So we've got all RVs over here.
And it looks like over here, they're actually maybe building another section, another RV section. So that might actually be on the map and not be a finished spot or they're still working on it. Again, this place I think got slapped together pretty quickly because they weren't able to open on time. So a good number of people, again, this is a Friday. We've heard this is a big check-in day because um, Kings Island's only open for the weekends now. So people coming in today probably went to Kings Island the next couple days. All right, so we're coming up on the furthest cabins away from the main lodge and the pool um, all the way to the east. So here are all of those cabins. And to be honest, I don't think any of them currently are occupied minus maybe just this one right here. Uh, this building here, and there's a couple dotted throughout the property, is a public bathroom, showers, and you can also do laundry there as well. Mostly probably for the RVs. All right, so now I'm gonna walk all the way back to the pool from the furthest point. Um, I won't make you go through the whole process of walking back, but I want to kind of time it so that you know if a golf cart might be a good idea from where you are. And again, this is the furthest point from the lodge and the pools. All right, here we go. More construction over here, a whole new section, the wood Sorrel, the Wood Sorrel Way section not completed yet. Don't know if those are gonna be cabins or more RV parks. Uh, they're just starting on the construction. You can see uh, there's an excavator back all the way uh, in the back there. So I'd say right now we're probably at maybe 40% capacity. I, I'm kind of guesstimating, but they say, you know, the check-ins are coming today. All right, so that building up there is gonna be the main pool. We're still walking towards it from that far east section. All right, so now we're coming up on the good stuff, the pool, I'm gonna show you the lodge, um, the store, the retail store, the fitness center, all that. Uh, walking from the furthest point to here takes between five and 10 minutes depending on your walking speed. So um, if you don't wanna walk that every time you wanna to go to the pool or you've got dis uh, mobility issues or anything like that, you might wanna think about renting one of those golf carts. Rent them early though, uh, because they did sell out on our trip. So uh, let's show you the pool first. And I should say pools, there's two of them. Uh, this is the family pool. And I'm gonna do a complete kind of rundown of the pool and I'll link that video um, up here in the corner. It's got a waterfall, basketball, a little kids area. This is the main pool. It's got cabanas for rent with TVs. Uh, the loungers are first come first serve. I'll take you over there to that whole food section here in just a second. And then the second pool is adults only. It's much more basic. Again, first come, first serve. It's gonna be quieter over here. Um, you're not gonna have the noise. This is more for uh, couples that are staying together. So here is the adults only pool. They do supply towels. They're not making you check them in, check them out with like a card system or anything like that. You just walk up, you can grab as many towels as you want, which is nice. On the honor system, you just return them. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous resort review videos, you know that I like that system. I don't like having to check a towel in, you know, kind of uh, showing them the card so you don't steal the towel kind of situation. Just trust me with the towel, why don't you? So they do that here, which is really, really nice. All right, so we're gonna kind of take the long way, but we're walking around and we're gonna go right in through the front where the check-in is, through the store, through the lodge, and um, show you the fitness center and the, the food court, the outdoor food court and all that. All right, so you walk up this pathway here. This is where you'll park to check in right here in front. You'll come in kind of right off of the highway in this way, and you'll come right in and check in right here. We've got these little rockers if you're waiting to check in. We had no wait when we checked in. So we'll walk right in through here, and this will be the front desk.
and they are cashless here. So they have this little machine here where you can load cash onto it and then they give you like a debit card, but they don't take any cash. Uh, now, maybe just because of COVID, not sure if that'll change, but as of right now, you have to load it onto a debit card. Here is the retail store, lots and lots of stuff. Hey guys. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Not too busy today, huh? No. Getting ready, I think, right? I know, that's what I hear. Oh, yeah. Alright, so let's look at some prices for some things. Here's a sweatshirt. I looked at this the other day but didn't check out the price. And I kind of liked it, so whoo. 50 bucks for a Camp Seer sweatshirt. I don't know about that, but you can get anything you want. We got uh, food here if you want to stock your fridge up. They've got beer here. They've got wine, you know, it's basically a little grocery store and, and it's got some odds and ends, some camping stuff because we do have a fire pit. So we walk right through here and now we're in the main lodge. So this is kind of the hangout area. Uh, I guess if it was cooler and it's a hot day, they would probably have the fireplaces going. They usually have sports on this TV here. Uh, the Reds game was on the other day. This is the, the main restaurant. Again, we'll review this restaurant, and again, I'll leave that link to that, to that review up here somewhere uh, once we eat at this restaurant. And then you walk from here, you can walk right back in through to the pool, and they're actually winding up the, so they can serve outdoor to the adults' pool right now. Uh, we, you can walk out to the adults' pool, but I'm gonna just walk out this side door, and then we'll walk around. So again, we're walking around, and we hit everything in the main building and now we're walking back to our room but we got a couple other things to hit uh, we want to look at the uh, activities area which is coming up right here and then also the little outdoor food court which is just opening up not quite open yet all right so it looks like they have cornhole two sets they've got this fake astroturf uh, grass the brady bunch style the, they've got cornhole they've got a jenga and then I think this is bocce ball, I think, um, or lawn bowling. I, I don't, I get them mixed up. I mean, I don't think it's lawn bowling because you're not on a lawn, you're on this gravel surface. Now, leave me a comment if you know which one this is. Is this bocce ball or is this lawn bowling? And I don't know how to play either anyway. And it doesn't look like anybody else does either because the balls are just kind of all over the place. And then this is the food court. We've got a taco stand. You can get mixed drinks and beer over here. They are open. Looks like they're just opening Route 66 Grill. That's uh, chicken tenders, fries, hot dogs, things like that. You can get hamburgers over at the beer stand as well and popcorn. And then they've also got an ice cream place and we haven't tried any of these yet. Again, another review might be coming on these, and if there is, I will leave that link up in the top. So that's basically it. We're right across from the second bathhouse, which is right here, which is where, again, you can take a shower or do your laundry. We're right across the street from that, so we're back to where we started. So that is a complete walk around of the entire property of Camp Cedar, even the underdevelopment uh, the parts that they haven't quite gotten a chance to uh, finish off yet. A couple lots that are under development. Um, all right, now on to the review. All right, so that was a complete tour, complete walkthrough of Camp Cedar here near Kings Island. Now on to the review. There's things that I liked, there's things that I didn't like, and then I'll give you a final review of was this place cool, was it lame, and would I stay here again? So I actually made a list, pros and cons. Let's go through it. All right, so first thing that I really liked was the pools. And again, there's two of them. There's an adults only pool. It's got loungers. It's got cabanas that you can rent out with TVs. It's just a basic pool, but really if you're coming, you know, just with your significant other or with no kids, uh, this is a nice place to hang out, much quieter section. And then they've got the uh, family pool with the waterfall. It's really nicely designed, the little kids area. Again, the loungers are gonna be first come, first serve, but the pools are really, really nice. So that's a big positive. The gym for a resort like this is actually really nice, well-equipped, full set of dumbbells, cardio equipment. You can get a good workout there if that's what you wanna do uh, on your trip. 
Um, the cabins are very, very nice. And again, I've done a complete walkthrough of the cabin that we are staying at. You can check that video out up here. Uh, the cabins are really nice. We paid about $230 a night average. Again, we're here at the end, middle end of August. Um, and also another big positive is if you are going to Kings Island, you can get discounted t uh, Kings Island tickets and you get early ride times um, on rides at Kings Island for staying at this resort. So a lot of positives. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that I wasn't quite into. All right, so uh, something that a lot of people care about, it's not quite that big of a deal for us. We like being a little bit uh, disconnected, but the Wi-Fi is very, very spotty. It works sometime and then it'll completely drop off. You won't be able to use uh, any of your devices at all. We did need to get a little bit of work done because we were here Thursday, uh, Friday, and Saturday, so during the work week as well, and you know the Wi-Fi was going in and out. So that was an annoyance. Um, the store, the store that we walked through, the gift shop is massively overpriced. Uh, sweatshirt, $50, you know, kind of really kind of crazy prices. Uh, the restaurant, the main restaurant is, it's okay. The pizza was pretty good. Um, I think they're still trying to fine tune things. Again, this place has only been open for about a month, but uh, you know, the restaurant was not the best. We'll just call it that. Um, and to be honest, I just don't think there is enough to do for the three nights, four days that we're staying at this resort just to stay at the resort. I really think that you're going to want to go off the resort, probably to Kings Island, but I just, there's not enough to do to occupy your time, in my opinion, just on the resort. They've got the pools, they've got a fitness center, really they don't have a whole lot more as far as entertainment goes. They've got restaurants. Um, showed you the bocce ball court. That stuff's going to get old before three days are up. So if you're coming for a long weekend, you're probably going to want to take at least a day to go to Kings Island as well. And then again, as of right now, and this might just be a COVID thing, uh, they are not taking cash whatsoever. This, is, this place is cashless. So you have to load it onto a card and then use the card. So as far as a final review goes, is this place cool? Is it lame? I would say this place is cool. This is definitely, uh, we're having a good time. This is a fun place to stay. Um, the little nitpicks that I had, I don't think outweigh uh, all of the positives that come along with staying here. Now, would I stay here again or is this place a one and done? If I came back, I would think I would definitely want to go off and go to Kings Island again. I wouldn't want to stay on the resort for um, all three days. So I would come back, but with the caveat that I would definitely want to be probably going to Kings Island one or two of the days while staying here. All right. I hope that was very, very helpful uh, while you're choosing to either stay at Camp Cedar or not. And now on to some bonus drone footage.